everyone and welcome to Paris, a city that doesn't need any adjectives for you to know how legendary this city is. It is of course the home to the Mona Lisa, the Eiffel Tower and an indescribable amount of good food to eat. French cuisine and dining habits has had a massive impact on the way we eat so today in this video we're gonna be guiding you through everything we ate in Paris. Obviously this video is but a drop in the bucket of the monster Parisian dining scene but we still hope you find our experiences and insights useful so without further ado let's get this list started Our first boulangerie stop is at Bohemi. It's a more modern bakery that isn't afraid to put twists on classic pastries, and I'm not gonna lie that it's their picture-perfect raspberry croissant that first lured us in. Not only is it gorgeous, but it tastes great too. Even the pan au praline is equally as beautiful and has got the personality to match with its perfectly buttery pastry and moorish hazelnut chocolate filling. You can't forget about the plain croissant too and remember to order a coffee for you to dip that bad boy in. We even got a super thick vanilla flan to join the party and one of the best, flakiest, butteriest, most decadent Kugan Amans we've ever had. This bakery is an amazing mix of traditional and modern and a worthy stopover for great breads and pastries. Another iconic bakery is Dupanet Desidé in no small part to their famous escargot. No, 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 not that escargot, these escargots, and especially their pistachio flavored ones. Honestly, we weren't the biggest fans of these and we could barely taste any pistachio despite its vibrant green hue, but thankfully their other pastries were way better. Their banana pan au chocolat especially was a very unique and most importantly delicious combo in case in a flaky pastry and we got another flan cause that stuff is lethal and the flan was not only super smooth but the pastry was impossibly crisp and buttery. The apple turnover was very pleasant and if you still want another escargot then they even have a berry flavored one. For the best Dupanet Desidé experience then take your pastries to the nearby Canal Saint Martin for the optimal pastry eating experience. I'm sure you've been dreaming of your main character moment sitting outside people watching at a Parisian cafe and well, we had ours here at Café Le Quartier General. It's a cute comic book themed cafe with a lot of street sightseeing to bask in the sunlight admiring the Paris morning rush. We actually came here for their hot chocolate which apparently is served the old fashioned way where you pour the milk into melted chocolate that's served with a cute flowery pattern. It's such a warming and decadent drink that really warmed us up in the Paris winter. They also do good food and AG got a croque madame that hit all the breakfast notes with its cheese, egg and ham and it even came with golden fries. I got a simple mushroom omelette cause my body loves its eggy protein and dad got one of their petit déjeuner options called Le British which comes with coffee, croissant, butter, jam, orange juice, fried eggs and bacon and a little tub of muesli too. Now that's a complete breakfast. French bistros are the best places to experience classic Parisian dining culture and Chez Savi is one of the best offering expert service and timeless food. This bistro is a veteran of the Paris dining scene opening way back in 1923. And what better way to start the meal with their signature entree of bone marrow. I mean, look at that beast. It's literally meat butter and perfect to spread on bread. You can't miss out on their famous oeuf mayonnaise too, which I know is just eggs and mayo, but you can't miss out on this French bistro staple. And speaking of classic dishes, escargot was on the menu and the parsley butter in this was so good. We couldn't resist a good old charcuterie platter either. And for mains, we got a surprisingly delicious andouille sausage with a creamy mustard sauce that's made with tripe, an impossibly flaky and succulent lamb confit with a deep and smoky sauce, and finally a menu special, hunky pork chop that was so fatty and tender. Their menu constantly changes with the season, so what you may see here may not be available, but that still doesn't change the fact that Chez Savi should be on your list. Also shout out to Sebastian, the best waiter in Paris. <laughs> the best waiter in Paris. Of course, of course. Jean Bonbert is France's most beloved sandwich and a must eat in Paris. Caractère de Cochon takes the humble Jean Bonbert and elevates it with the finest deli meats and cheeses. My eyes lit up so hard by the sheer beauty of its display of cured meats, hams and terrines and the lovely staff do a great job guiding you to pick your ideal baguette and we got four beauties. 
Our mom got your classic jambon bear, but spruced up with a truffle ham to make it extra special. Aliana couldn't resist her favorite mortadella, and these ribbons of meat were also infused with beautiful truffles and slices of comte cheese. The baguettes are also such high quality and loaded with a generous amount of butter. Dad got a beautiful baguette with cured mangalitsa pig and briny manchego cheese, and I got a cured French black pig which was absolutely divine and had a delicate nutty saltiness about it. I also bought the super interesting medieval looking terrine made with pig's head which made for excellent additional sandwich filler. It was only right to take these beautiful baguettes to the Champ de Mars by the Eiffel Tower and have a mini picnic there. Eating out in Paris can be quite the wallet ringer at times, however, Bouillon Pigalle is the cheap eat hero we need cause they do French bistro classics at the friendliest of price points. And cause it was so cheap, you know we had to go all out, starting with the entrees of cream of parsnip soup, beautiful cured herrings and oil with potatoes and carrots, escargots of course, it's a classic, a side of ratatouille just cause it's the greatest food movie of all time and onto the mains of a comforting macaroni with Parisian ham and summer truffle gratin, pork sausages with gravy and mash, or as Gino de Campo would call it, banga de mash. <laughs> onto this absolutely tender and hunky pork shoulder with potato gratin, and of course, steak frites, butter, and absolutely golden fries. Oh, but we're not done, because we also got dessert. Firstly, this brioche French toast with Chantilly cream, and finishing off with her iconic milk ice cream, profiterol. She is beauty, she is grace, she was only 4 euros 80. It's not the highest quality food in the world, but it's borderline unbelievable value at that price point. 87 euros for all that food and a couple of drinks? Come on now. On to some more boulangeries, and this spot has won the award for best butter croissant in Paris back in 2018, and they definitely aren't shy to flex their awards. This is La Maison de Isabelle in the Latin Quarter, and you can smell the buttery aroma of this boulangerie from a mile away, as if you're driving past a KFC. Of course, we're here for their award-winning butter croissant, and it's perfectly golden, flaky, buttery, and slightly crisp. We also got their pain au chocolat, which was absolutely fantastic, and also this apple turnover with a pastry that was incredibly light and flaky. And because we couldn't resist, we also got a classic Kuga Amon, which if you've never had one before, it's literally one of the most decadent pastries in existence, and the one they do here is no different. A lovely local boulangerie, and it's even next to a cute local market. <laughs> Auto de Pont is another local boulangerie that we absolutely loved. It's a rustic bakery in Le Marais that do pastries, tarts, and savouries, and they've won a few awards throughout the years for both their plain croissant and baguette. And speaking of award-winning croissants, theirs is another beauty and was our favorite croissant out of all the boulangeries we visited. The crispy, buttery flakiness was just on another level with this one. The Aucklanders and us were both relieved and excited that we finally saw an almond pastry, and this one absolutely blew me away with its super buttery and flavorful filling. Oh, it's so good. I also got a bacon and egg quiche, which was a great savory, and AG got a lovely lemon meringue tart, which was so beautiful. I'd love to be a pigeon near this bakery because I'd be feasting on some gourmet crumbs. On to another classic French restaurant that's well known for its beef bourguignon, Chez Fernand. This place dating back from 1970 oozes rustic charm from its wooden interior, chalkboard menu, and comforting food. We started our meal with a house red wine cause we got a before digging into foie gras or fattened duck liver with a cider jelly which was such a smooth and luscious spread to go with some bread. It might turn some animal rights head a bit but ethically, you know, maybe not the best but can't deny that it's delicious. For a less controversial dish, the roasted cod with a unique leek fondue was such a delicate and delightful dish and that fondue was the star pairing. The beef bourguignon itself was fantastic and had such an intense savory wine flavor with super tender beef, although I wish it had more beef pieces for the amount of stew. My favorite dish of the meal though was their cassoulet, a rustic French stew that's a meat lover's dream of pork, chicken, and sausage all in a super warming stew with beans. We finally ended the meal with creme brulee, a classic French dessert, and this was top tier. Not only was this loaded with real vanilla, but the brulee top was perfect. Perfectly crisp. I wish we had another one. Yeah. 
Crepes are such an iconic French street food and no one does cheap and chunky crepes like Au Petit Grec. This isn't the ideal creperie for a sit-down meal with utensils, but their crepes are absolutely loaded with fillings and make for such a great snack or meal to go. And you can even watch them make it fresh, which is honestly one of the best things I love about buying crepes. My crepe came loaded with chorizo, cheese, eggs, potatoes, lettuce, tomatoes. It's basically the whole food pyramid and I felt so nourished by this. Yanbi got a flavor called the Sicilian that's equally packed with veggies with an Italian twang of a lot of stretchy mozzarella and pesto. I also got a dessert crepe filled with chestnut cream that went perfectly with our Sand River cruise later that night. They really don't skimp on the fillings here and it's such good value. Now you must grab a box of macarons while in Paris and La Durée is a macaron institution that's even expanded to have branches all around the world. We went to their branch in Le Marais and it's such an elegant and cute shop full of gorgeous treats. We got flavors such as bitter almond, orange blossom, milk chocolate coated hazelnut, passion sweet clover, and our two favorites, the addicting strawberry candy and their very unique Marie Antoinette tea which even had some citrus flavors to it. They even do these treats called Eugenie which is basically a chocolate coated biscuit with a gooey center and they were great too if you want something different. They are expensive but their flavors are unique and I understand how hard it is to make picture perfect macarons because I've tried it a few times and they are literally the bane of my existence. And it's a very humbling experience. Yeah. Another famous macaron shop is Pierre Henme and like La Durée, they have many branches across Paris and we ran into this branch on the banks of the Seine. We only got a humble box of four, but each flavor was great. We got a nutty pistachio, a delicately sweet and fragrant vanilla, a tangy and bright raspberry, and the super interesting chocolate and passion fruit that was an amazing combo. Yet again, these are expensive, but macarons are always expensive wherever you go. We actually preferred the texture of La Durée's macarons over these ones, but they're still worth trying out. Okay, I know this isn't French food, but we gotta show out for the homeland and Reina is out here representing Filipino food and culture loud and proud in Paris. This modern Filipino restaurant is the brainchild of Chef Erika Paredes and I know we're being a little bit biased, but we think this is a must visit in Paris. We started with their signature Hainan Burrata, the unique combo of ketchup manis, ginger, spring onions, and chili oil made for a fantastic burrata combo that we've never seen before. You'll see familiar names as well in dishes such as their beef Paris soup, their parsnip kare kare, luscious palabok noodles, and their highly addicting patis caramel wings. Oh, that stuff was lethal. We also got a beautiful lechon belly which even came with house-made mang tomas sauce. I'm sold. However, it was the crispy ulo that was the showstopper, a head-turning dish of roasted pig's head that's not only super crispy and juicy, but an absolute joy to pick apart till it's only a bare skull. We finally ended the night with their take on a classic brazo de Mercedes that's filled with creamy and cinnamony apples. Make sure to make a stop at the Philippine Embassy, I mean Reina, when you're in Paris, you won't regret it. Indulging in cheese and charcuterie is one of the joys of eating in Paris, so why not do both at Le 1745 Pigalle, where it's all about immaculately presented charcuterie boards served with great wines. How it works is that you pick a range of cheeses, meats, and crudites from a list, or you can leave it up to them and choose one of their ready selected boards. We got a gorgeous pre-made board filled with their selections for the day that had the likes of meaty fouet catalan, jambon cru or cured ham, meaty rillettes, which is preserved pork, this delicious country pate, and copa or gabagol depending on where you're from, and some fantastic cheeses like this nutty Beaufort cheese, the very unique monk's head cheese that's shaved to look like a beautiful ribbon, and this super gooey reblochon which was my favorite. They give you plenty of high quality bread too so you're definitely gonna get full from this and remember to pair it with a beautiful bottle of wine to complete your experience. We also came across this spot in Le Marais by pure chance after one of our plans fell through but we're glad it did because Janet do some mean deli sandwiches. They claim they're the best deli in town and we're gonna take their word on it because their sandwiches are delicious. I got myself an egg salad sandwich because I'm a sucker for that stuff and it was so good and pretty decently filled. 
the way the bread is toasted with all that butter too is absolutely glorious. The boys got themselves some meaty stacked pastrami sandwiches. AG got the Janet pastrami sandwich with super addictive caramelized onions infused in it. And dad got the Longer's pastrami sandwich with the iconic pairing of sauerkraut. They were so fatty and juicy and really took us back to New York. And for a little treat, we also got a delicious hot dog with yet again a super golden bun topped with onions and mustard. You can't miss its blinding fluorescent glow at night, and like moths to a light bulb, we're glad we were drawn to Janet and their awesome sandwiches. And then the moth said, because the light was on. I love you, Kermit, but there's no way we were leaving Paris without eating frogs, and Roger Le Grand Vie is the best place to have them. The name translates to Roger the Frog, and this cozy and intimate place is decked out in frog decor, complete with a giant frog watching you pee in the toilet. And if you're not feeling like eating frog, which is weird because then why would you go here? Their non-frog dishes are fantastic too. The French onion soup was absolutely cheesy and comforting. The sturgeon and caviar riettes were so decadent and perfect to spread on bread. And the creamy chicken with grape was a unique but lovely combo. But onto the main events, we got a fried frog dish with three different types of sauces and it was so crispy and delicious and kind of felt like eating a chicken wing. Their signature frog dish is done with a fragrant parsley butter and served with rice and this was another delight. And if you're feeling healthy, they even do a Caesar salad with frogs too. I guess they put frogs in everything here, but honestly, it works. We even got the perfect wine to go with the dishes called the Arrogant Frog. Some things just work out. Finally, we have La Jacobine. It's quickly grown to become a legendary spot, not only because of its charming hidden gem location, but also because of its amazing food and service. We started off with this French onion soup that blew us away with its impossibly crisp, cheesy top and savory broth. That is six pound onion. Next was a gooey and warming tartiflette made with cheese, creams, potatoes, and sausage. And we even got some salmon blinis because we felt like something non-French. The first main of salmon with spinach and rice and a pork filet served with mustard sauces were pretty decent, but it was the coco ven and the duck confit that stole the show. The duck confit was a divine texture of meaty crispiness that needed no sauce to shine, while the super luscious coco ven was definitely strong in the wine flavor and made for great bread dipping. They have a great dessert cabinet too, so we got a couple of treats such as this picture-perfect pistachio and raspberry tart, and the impossible to eat tidily but delicious milfui. And low-key, does La Jacobine also do the best hot chocolate in Paris? Cause that thick and velvety concoction with a mountain of cream was elite. So yeah, get your stomachs ready for Paris because we're not sure what's more likely. You going through even just 1% of all the amazing food spots in the city, or a rat impressing the city's most notorious food critic and opening their own award-winning restaurant. And if you want to see more of these places and our food and travel adventures in Paris, then be sure to watch the full vlogs over on our YouTube channel. All right, and that does it for our list. And as I mentioned, this is obviously not a definitive list, but we still hope you found it useful regardless. And shout out to Ratatouille for being the greatest cooking film of all time. And that's just facts. Anyway, I know Paris is gonna be a city that I'm gonna be constantly returning to to explore even more of their amazing food here. And I hope you have a legendary time eating your way through Paris. Bye-bye.